Hello, this is Paul again, talking about renewal, the fifth way of renewal today. So let's pray and lift up this day in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh Lord, our blessed Lord, our generous and saving Lord, we give our lives to you that we may communicate live in communion with you today and learn what that's all about. Lead us into deeper and deeper communion so we can experience the joy, the love that we are meant to live and enjoy in your presence, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, we are on the fifth way of renewal, and this is the fifth stanza of the renewal prayer. The first part says, We are always in communion. We always pray in communion with your body and blood, soul, and divinity. So, the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus is him giving himself through the Eucharist. The body and blood, soul and divinity is the Eucharistic Jesus. So, this is what we'll be looking at today. What is Eucharistic living? And what does the Eucharist have to do with our daily life? In a little detail, too. So, we are going to be looking at communion. What is communion about? I've got a couple definitions of communion here. The sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts and feelings, especially when the exchange is on the mental or spiritual level. So the sharing and exchanging of intimate thoughts and feelings. There's an intimacy when we are in communion with somebody. The second definition is the service of Christian worship in which the bread and wine are consecrated and shared. This is communion too. We, 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 are in, we call it Eucharist. We call it the Mass. But we receive communion, communion. And this is not a prayer where we are just talking to the Lord and the Lord's talking to us. That's an important part of prayer, but the communion of our prayer is deeper than just the sharing of ideas. This is being sharing my whole self with Jesus as he shares his whole self. And that's what the body and blood, soul, and divinity is. So Jesus shares, when, when we, we talk about the Eucharist, Jesus is fully present in the Eucharist. And so Jesus is with us always. He said, uh, I will be with you always until the end of time. He's with us always, but not always in the same exact way. When Jesus is with us by receiving him in communion, receiving his body and blood, we receive Jesus' fullness, his body and blood, soul and divinity. And we're going to look a little closer about what that's all about. We receive nourishment. When Jesus is giving his whole life, he's nourishing us, and he's asking in return for our whole response. This is the give us this day our daily bread that we are praying from Jesus. This communion, body and blood, soul, and divinity. When we receive the daily bread, the, the height of of receiving the bread or the life of Jesus comes through the Eucharist by daily receiving communion in Eucharist. Now, 
Jesus said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the life. When we receive Jesus fully, body and blood, soul and divinity, then we are receiving his life. The, the reception of Eucharist gives us eternal life when we receive it well, uh, not with any mortal sin on our soul and with a desire for God, then we receive the life of Jesus in our life. And it's not just a, a, a one-time thing that we, that we lose by the next time we receive it, and then we gain it back again. As we receive Jesus more and more, it is a cumulative effect. We are receiving more and more life in us, and we are growing in life. So a daily communion is just, you know, increasing our life tremendously through the presence and power, the nourishment of the bread of life, Jesus. So when we receive the Eucharist, we consume. There's that intimacy that was talked about in communion that we're receiving, and we re consume. Now, two lovers consume each other in many ways. When you're deeply in love with somebody, you want to know what they think, what they feel, what's going on in life, what has happened, what are their dreams. You just want to receive that whole person and you want to consume everything. It is nourishment to your life to consume that person. And with our perfect relationship with Jesus, we he wants to be consumed by us. Remember, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life. He wants us to be consumed. This is why he had the Last Supper instituted the Eucharist for our, our life. So, when we receive Jesus in this way, we are embracing God's will. What is God's will? God's will is to love one another as I have loved you. How do we perfect love? By receiving the love of Jesus, which is Eucharist, receiving Jesus himself, who is love. This enables us to embrace God's will better each day as we receive more and more of the life of Jesus, and we are able to accept his will each day. This is receiving the daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread, Lord. And the Lord gives it back to us in his will. So each day, things will happen. We just know. We, we ask in the morning, prepare us for this day. I offer this day to you, Lord. Help me to be ready. And Jesus will give his life. Jesus will bring up things that we don't expect that, that challenge us each day. And Jesus is saying the body of Christ through this event, the body of Christ. So a challenging person comes up, a difficult situation, something totally unexpected. It takes a turn in our life and we're not ready. Jesus is saying the body of Christ, will we say amen? Will we say, so be it? Will we receive Jesus into our life? So we receive him sacramentally. Will we receive him each day as he gives us his will? And will we say, so be it, amen, when the will of God comes into our life? This is communion with his body and blood, soul, and divinity each day in so many different ways. So we can be consumed by others, letting our life be used and chewed up by others. Imagine as we chew up the body of Christ or let it dissolve in our mouth, it becomes part of our body. Can we 
give ourselves to others in the same way and say to others, the, the body of Christ, I give my body to you to receive, to receive me and, and chew me up and use me in your life that I may serve you and that I may be become a part of life as Jesus has become a part of my life and, and brought me closer in love, can I give myself away the body of Christ so I can share my body and blood, my soul and my divinity. Am I divine? I am a child of God. God has said, you are my children and I am your father. So there is divinity that is what God wills for us. This is my body given up for you. This is my blood poured out for, for you. This is living Eucharistically. When we live the body of Christ and we live the body and blood, soul, and divinity each day and give away our total self as Jesus gives his total self to us. That's living Eucharistically each day. And how do we pray Eucharistically? Now, a lot of this is outlined in the uh, uh, Divine Mercy Chaplet. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and for those of the whole world. So the Chaplet of Divine Mercy is a Eucharistic prayer. The body and blood, soul, and divinity is the definition of Jesus' total presence through the Eucharist, as close as we'll be to heaven on earth. So what is the body and blood, soul, and divinity? And how do we pray this way? So what is the body of Christ? Now, the Lord has revealed a prayer of meditation for the Divine Mercy Chaplet. It's been a great gift, and I will be sharing this. I'm in the process of doing that, uh, but the Lord is working with that, where he led me to take for each of the uh, parts of the Divine Mercy Chaplet, each of the decades of the rosary. So the first decade is the body of Christ. And then the second, the blood, the third, the soul, and the fourth, the divinity. The fifth decade is the uh, sacred heart of Jesus, which sums up all, uh, all four parts of the, of the Eucharistic life of Jesus. So what is the body? The body is some of the major points in the physical life of Jesus. The body is his nativity, his ministry his healing and his preaching, uh, the ways he needed to use his physical body in life, his carrying of the cross, and his dying on the cross are four main ways that the body of Christ is evident through his life. The blood of Christ is, when does the blood of Christ come about? So this is sweating blood in the agony in the garden sweating blood and the scourging scourging very bloody all over his body and then nailed to the cross the nails through his hands and feet uh, bring forth blood and then hanging on the cross the scourging the crowning with thorns the nailing to the cross and being pierced in the side are always, he completely emptied his blood out for us to save us and to love us and show his love for us. What is the soul of Christ? The soul is our intellect and our will, what we know and what we choose. So I say uh, the soul is, for us, is knowing Jesus and choosing Jesus. So this is how our soul makes decisions in life. And one of the biggest ways to do this in our life, and Jesus did this too, is obedience. So we have obedience to the will of the Father. And Jesus was so close at one with the Father. So he was one with the Father's will. And we are one with the Father as well. 
and then obeying uh, religious authority, uh, parental authority, and then legitimate secular authority. All of these legitimate authorities in our life are part, the word of God says, obey these when they are legitimate. So those are ways our soul takes action and we make choices as well. So also in the agony of garden, Jesus said, my soul is sorrowful unto death. This was only one of the only places I was able to find soul in on Jesus's lips. I might have missed something, but it is a very important part. In the agony of the garden saying, my soul is sorrowful unto death. So this is another way. He's making a choice. He, he's, his knowledge, he knows what's going to happen, what he's going to suffer, but he chooses to give his life, not my will, but yours be done. And again, on the cross, the fourth way in each section is on the cross. On the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So this is Jesus crying out in anguish for all the sins of man and his rejection because he embraced and took the sins on his back. And his the rejection of dying on the cross through this and the same cry that we have sometimes, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Our soul cries out to God. And the divinity. Divinity is, Jesus did not esteem uh, equality with God, something to be grasped, but became a slave. So divinity is not a kingly, mighty, glorifying thing, but a sacrifice. The divinity of Jesus did not deem equality with God, but, and he was also tempted in the desert. And this was temp his, his divinity was questioned through the three temptations in the desert. If you are the son of God, then turn the bread into, uh, turn those stones into bread. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down and the angels will support you. Also, his divinity is shown in being crowned with thorns. His crown is a crown of thorns for all of our evil and sinful thoughts. The crown of thorns hung and pierced into his head. Um, and then raised up on the throne of cross. If I be raised up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. So being lifted up on the cross and hanging on the cross is the throne that he showed his powerful power from by dying on the cross. This is the way that we pray in communion with the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus. This is how we give ourselves fully, body and blood, soul and divinity, to Jesus as he's giving us his body and blood, soul and divinity. So we can give ourselves fully as he gives himself fully to us in full communion with him each day. So we pray, Heavenly Father, thank you for your giving us your son that he may give his life fully for us, that we may be fully die with him to our sin and rise to him in his victorious resurrection that we may dwell with you in communion each day, offering up all things and give our life away to others that they can chew us up and receive us into their life and we can improve their, their lives by the grace of God, the grace of Jesus in us. Help us to live in communion with you, body and blood, soul and divinity. We pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much.